Moving on to the next question on the test, we have a word problem here. So the height of a ball thrown off a roof is modeled by the function h of t is equal to negative 5t squared plus 25t plus 6, where h of t is the height in meters and t is seconds after the ball was thrown. And we have to answer these three questions here. So how long was the ball in the air? How high will the ball be after three seconds? And what is the max height of the ball? Now, we've done these types of questions before. Notice how we're given the function in standard form. However, this function, I just want to make a note, could be given in any form. You can get a question like this where the function is given in vertex form or in factored form. And I'm actually going to expand a little bit on that at the end of the video, talking about if this function was given in different form, how would we be going about answering these questions differently? But for now, we're just dealing with standard form. And notice that there's a C value here which makes sense because the ball is thrown off a roof. So if we draw somewhat of a diagram for this, when t is zero, so this is h here, this is t. When the time is zero, that's when the ball is being thrown off the roof. Plug in zero for t, we get six, which is here. So basically the ball is gonna be thrown up and then it's gonna come back down like that. That's how this quadratic is going to look. So because it's thrown off a roof, it makes sense that that C value is six there. Now, sometimes there may not be a C value, then we know that the ball is being thrown from the origin. It's basically being thrown from the ground or a ball is being kicked, for example. But again, that C value of six makes sense ball is thrown off a roof. Now they're not asking how high the roof is, but if they were asking that, that's what the answer would be. So starting off with part A, they're asking how long was the ball in the air? So basically they're asking for this value here. What's this T value? Let's call it T1, right? When the ball is going to hit the ground, that's how long the ball is in the air from zero seconds to T1 seconds. Now, when it hits the ground, the height of the ball is going to be zero. So we plug in zero for h. So we'll have negative 5t squared plus 25t plus 6. We just have to solve this here, this quadratic equation. Two ways to solve quadratic equations. You could either factor or you could use the quadratic formula. Unfortunately, this is not gonna factor here smoothly. So negative five times six is negative 30. Two numbers that multiply to negative 30 add up to 25. There's no numbers like that. So we're gonna have to throw this into the quadratic formula to get that T1 value. So basically T would equal negative B, the B value is 25, so negative 25 plus or minus b squared, so we'll have 25 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 5, times c, which is positive 6, all over 2a, so 2 times negative 5. And when you do that calculation with the quadratic formula, you'll get these two answers here. So t is equal to 5.23 or t is equal to negative 0.23. So going back to the diagram, this here is going to be 5.23 seconds. And then there's another intercept at negative 0.23 seconds right here. But we would ignore that there because we're dealing with time in this case. And time can only be positive. So 5.23 seconds, that is how long the ball is in the air. Now, moving on to part B, they're asking, how high will the ball be after three seconds? So at three seconds, which is maybe like around here, let's say, how high is the ball gonna be? Well, for that, pretty simple, we just solve h of three. So we would plug in three seconds for the t values in the formula, so negative five, 3 squared plus 25 times 3 plus 6. So this would be um, 3 squared is 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. 
plus 75 plus 6. This ends up being 36 meters. Right. So that's the answer, 36 meters. That's how high the ball is after 3 seconds. Just plug in 3 for T. And then part C, what is the max height? Now, when they're asking for a maximum, a couple of different ways to solve for a maximum, as we know. We actually have the intercepts. So what we can do is we could actually add up the intercepts, divided by 2, and that would give us the T value that's in the middle. That would give us the axis of symmetry, and then we could plug that T value into the equation and get the max height. We can also complete the square. That's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the function and complete the square on it. So I could factor out a negative 5 from the first two. So I have t squared minus 5t. This will be plus 6. t squared minus 5t. Half of negative 5 is negative 2.5. And then when we square it, that ends up being 6.25. So we'll do plus 6.25 minus 6.25. So we're dealing with decimals here. This will be plus 6. And then what happens is we rewrite, or this is minus rather, sorry. We rewrite the first three terms here, and then we have to take out this negative 6.25. When we take it out, we have to multiply it by uh, what's in front. So negative 5 times negative 6.25, that would give us what? Uh, 31.25, and then we'll be adding 6. And then from here, we just have to factor this quadratic, which will always be a perfect square trinomial. So this would be t minus 2.5. This would be squared. 31.25 plus 6, that gives us 37.25. So took this, converted it to vertex form. And from here, we could tell what the vertex is. The vertex is 2.5 and 37.25. Right, so 2.5, at 2.5 seconds, the ball reaches a height, a max height of 37.25, right? So this again, its coordinate is 2.5, 37.25. So what is the max height? 37. 0.25 meters, right? So that's one way you get the vertex, complete the square. Again, we had the two intercepts, so we could have just added them up and divided it by two, and look what happens. 5.23 plus negative 0.23, that gives us five, divided by two, that gives us 2.5. And then if you take 2.5, plug it into here, then you would get 37.25, the max height. So that's another way to do it. I just like completing the square. So I like to put it in vertex form and then just get the vertex directly from the function. Okay, so those are the answers to all the questions. A um, couple of things I want to mention. First off, what if they asked for the domain and range of this scenario? Well, the domain would be t can be anything as long as it's between 0 and 5.23 and then the range the height can be anything as long as it's between 0 and 37.25 right they didn't ask for the domain and range but just in case they ever do that's what it would be because this is a word problem the domain and the range are restricted. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I want to talk about if this was given in a different format. Again, it was given in standard form, but what if they gave us this function in vertex form? So in this form right here, so negative 5 t minus 2.5 squared plus 
0.25. How would things change? Well, we would still get the exact same answers because this and that are the same, just in different formats. But we would be doing different types of work. So for example, part C, what is the max height? We would already be able to tell what it is, right? Because it's already given in vertex form. So 37.25, we could answer part C right away without doing any work if this was given in vertex form. How high will the ball be after three seconds? We would still have to plug in three for T here, right? And get the height, but you would still get 36 meters if you plugged it in here or if you plug it in there, right? Both will give you the same answer. And then part A, how long was the ball in the air? We would have to set H equal to zero. And then um, multiple ways to solve for this T. You can bring this over, divide by negative five, square root everything. Or you could just expand everything and put it into standard form and then put in the quadratic formula. And I actually recommend doing it that way. It's gonna take you maybe a little bit longer Right, if you expand this, this would be t squared uh, minus 5t plus 6.25. This would be plus 37.25. Right, so if you expand the negative 5 in the bracket, and then uh, you would have the negative 31.25 plus 37.25, that would give you positive 6. Then you have negative 5t squared plus 25t expand all that, put it into standard form, and then do the same steps that we did in part A, right? So just understand that this can be given in different formats. And so sometimes the way you go about solving these questions is gonna be a little bit different. The process is gonna be different. But nevertheless, you should be able to solve any question they give you, no matter the format of a function they give you.